Let's take a look at homework number 12. The first topic is center and spread visually. For this question, they're asking you to compare data set T at the dot plot at the top with data set U. From the drop down menu, you will choose both times either the word greater than or less than. So when you look visually at data set T, you can see the trend of the data. As we kind of sketch here, you can see the trend of that data, and then we can see the trend of data set U. And when they're asking us to compare the center, the center of data set T is around here, and the center of data set U is really up in this area. So now we can compare that the center of data set T is less than the center of data set U, and that the spread, which is the distance between the lowest and highest values of these data sets, is greater for the set U. So that means that data set T also has a less than the spread of data set U. So again, you're looking carefully to see the center of the data, and you can kind of visually imagine that you're drawing these curves here along the data. And as you can see, this is the center of data set Q. It's not really the center of data set R. So we're going to say that data set Q has a center that is less than data set R, and the spread for data set R is 56 all the way up to 75. Data set Q is also less than the spread. All right, so that's the first topic there. We're going to take a look now at the second topic. which is interpret mixed representations. So they're going to show you all different sets of data here. Uh, this one happens to be a dot plot, and they're asking you how many students were surveyed. So this is a number line that shows the time that they brushed, but the dots represent the amount of people that were surveyed. So you count up those dots, one, two, four, five, six, seven, and you type that here. Uh, this one asks you to find the mean of the set of data. So you can either use your handheld TI-84 or you can use an online graphing calculator, um, Desmos. Let's first take a look at the TI-84 since that's what you'll be using on your Regents exam. So I need to put these uh, five data points into the Stat button here. Press the Stat button and choose number one for Edit. And here in List 1, it should be empty of all old values. And now I'm going to enter these five data points, pressing Enter after each entry. And once all five data points are in, I go back to the Stat button. I arrow once to the right to the Calc menu, and I choose number one for one variable stats. And I press Enter three times to move the cursor down to calculate. Now the five number summaries here um, are usually down near the bottom, but when you want to find the mean of a data set, that's the numerical average, you can use this field right here. It's called X bar. So that X bar is the mean, and you could have certainly added up all these five numbers and divided by five. You could have done that as well. Um, they ask you to find the mean, so we're going to type 113.8 here. If you wanted to use the Desmos graphing calculator online, it would look a little bit different. For the Desmos calculator, you'd have to write your list of data here and give it a name. Uh, so I'll call it L for list, and this is how you start a list. And we would type those numbers again, so 180, uh, 109, 121, 109, comma 121, 64, oops, 64, 86, and the last one, 189. Once you have your data uh, typed here in list one, you go down to the next row and you just type the word mean and you tell it what list you want the mean for. And there you have it. 
Now, although you can certainly um, add these all up and divide by five because it's a short list, it's good to know how to use your calculators to perform these operations. Next question here asks us to determine the most common interval of temperature. So that would be the interval with the highest bar, which would be 12 here. And so that interval is 45 to 49. Choose that from the drop down menu and select yes. The next one is the interquartile range of a box plot. So the interquartile range is the distance from Q1 to Q3. So you have to determine what that value is. And when I look here, this is only one tick mark, so it must be a 35, and this is a 70. So we would subtract 70 minus 35, and we would get our interquartile range. And we'll submit. Uh, the last one asks you to find the median of the data. So again, you could certainly very quickly put all of these data in order from least to greatest. You could do that. 24, 41, 89, 123, and 166. And take one from the top, one from the bottom, and you can find the median uh, that way. You could also uh, find the median using your calculators. Um, you can type them into the TI-84 by putting them in the stat edit list here. You could type all of them in here. And if you wanted to use the Desmos graphing calculator, I know this is the wrong data set, but if you typed in the data set, you would then type median and whoops, and you could find that median. So either way that you choose to do it, you could determine that. Uh, median value. Well, right, let's take a look at the third topic, creating a frequency table. So frequency tables where you create tally marks every time a data point happens. So you'll see here, my first data point is 10. So I'm going to create a tally mark in this interval here of nine between nine to 11. So I'm going to put it, click this once, that's a tally mark. All right, so, so far I have made a mark for 10, then I'm going to make a mark for 7, and so I'm going to click in between this interval here, then I'm going to make a mark for 5, another mark for another 5, and then a 6, and then a 4, a 1, a 13, a 6, 3, 4, 6, 2, 6, 10, 5, so, so far I've gone down this list entirely, and now I'm on the next row. So I'm going to type in 3, 0, 2, 2, so I've got 3, 0, 2, 2, 6, 5, 13, 2, 8, 1, 9, and 6. So now I can count these up. So this is a group of 5 plus 2 more, that makes 7. So down here is 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 plus 3 is 8, this one has 3 tally marks, and this one has 2. And that's how you create a frequency table. So again, you go down the list, you click in the middle box every time something is in that interval. If you want to take it away, you click the minus sign. And then you tally up all those marks and you write the digit for the frequency. All right, now we're going to go to topic number four, which is finding the mean from a frequency table. And this one can be challenging because these are not the only data points. These are the data points, all right? I'm sorry. These are the number of that data point. So there are seven number 60s. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times you'd have to write that data point and three times you'd have to write a 65, and seven times you'd have to write a 70. So if you're going to calculate the mean, that's a lot of numbers for you to be typing in your calculator. So you can certainly open a calculator and use the main math screen, and you can type 60 plus 60 and seven times, and then you can add up all these digits um, to find the mean. You could also enter them into the stat list here, 
uh, so that you don't have to press the plus sign. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. Six, seven. So I've got seven of those. I've got three sixty fives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then five seventy fives. And then two eighties. Then four eighty fives. Then six nineties. And then two ninety fives. All right, so it looks like I have thirty six data points. So let's see here. Uh, seven and seven, that's fourteen. Um, this is 10, this is 4, so I've used up all these, um, and this makes 8, so let's see, I've got 18, 26, 36, yep, 36 data points is correct, and once I know that I've got them all there, then I can stat calc, uh, one variable stats three times, and again, if I want to find the mean, that's the x bar up here at the top. So it says to round to the nearest tenth, so that would be 75.3. I should have probably scanned my data just to see if I missed any tens digits. Um, looks pretty good, um, but you should always check it over. Um, that's one benefit to using the Desmos um, online calculator is that you could scan it pretty quickly. So let's try that. Okay, so that's how you find the mean from a frequency table. So now we're going to create a box plot, the next topic. Again, you're going to put all this data into your graphing calculator here. If you don't have a TI-84 at home, then you can use a Desmos online calculator. So let me go ahead and show you how to use the Desmos graphing calculator to calculate this five number summary. So first you're going to need to make a list of your data. So I'll call mine list L, and then you're going to look at the numbers 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10. So in here with commas, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10. And then we have 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 14, and 15, 16, 17, 17, 15, oops. 16, 17, 17. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And this says 14 elements in the list. Excellent. So if I want all the stats here, I can just say stats, parentheses, capital L, and there's all my stats. What is it looking for? It's looking for the min, the Q1. So my min is 3, 8, 13, 15, 3, 8, 13, 15, and my max is 17. And that's it. All right, so once I have used this calculator to calculate my stats, and once I've typed in all of the appropriate numbers, I then have to start clicking and dragging the five number summary here. So my minimum should be at three, so I'm gonna click and drag. My median, uh, my Q1 is at eight, my median is 13, my Q3 is 15, and my max is 17. So now I've typed the five number summary and I've created the box plot based on those five numbers. So you're gonna do this a few more times. You're gonna get your data set, you can type it in the Desmos online calculator here by naming your list using any letter you like, an equal sign, and brackets, right? All right, now we're going to interpret some dot plots here. Um, what was the most common amount of time someone spent brushing their teeth? Well, the highest dots are on three, so that's the most common time. Uh, what was the most common number of goals scored? Well, this one has the highest number. There were four um, people who scored three goals, so 
the most common number of goals scored was three. How many students take more than 40 minutes to get to school? So you look at 40 and it says more than 40 minutes. So these kids take exactly 40. Um, so there would be one, one student that takes more than 40. All right, we're going to take a look at the last category, which is interpreting the calculator outputs or the stats. So if you have one list of data called one of our stats, you can calculate um, or you can determine lots of things. This one here is the actual mean right, when you add up all the data. Uh, this one is when you find the sum of all the numbers. And this is the sum squared. So that sigma, oops, that sigma letter, oops, <laughs> that like little crooked E letter, that sigma letter means to add up or the sum. Uh, these are the standard deviations. So this one is standard deviation and that one is also standard deviation. But this one with the S is the sample standard deviation. And this one with the Greek letter um, theta is the population. So if you're asked to find the population standard deviation, you're looking for that um, letter there, that little letter there. Uh, the rest of these five number summaries we've seen before. So let's take a look at the question. Determine the range of the data set. So for us, the range is the minimum to the maximum. All right, so you take your calculator out and you would type in 117 minus 81. And you would type your data point and the answer here. Let's see what the next question will be. The next question is Determine the mean of the data set. And remember that the mean is the X bar value. So that's this one here at the top and it's to the nearest hundred. So that's the place value we want to look at. So it looks like it's going to be 239.71 because the number after the number one is not large enough to round us up. Uh, this one asks you to determine the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is the distance from Q1 to Q3. So that's 140 minus 116. We'll type that here and we're good. And one more time, let's see. The mean is the X bar rounding to the nearest hundredth. So that would be 187.86. See if I can get a standard deviation question. Yeah, here we go. I'll determine the population standard deviation. So again, remember, this one is the population standard deviation. So I'm going to round it to nearest hundred. So that'd be 20.23. 20 20.23. And that concludes the last question for homework number 12.